Okay. So we call the meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Okay. Next order of business is to adopt the agenda, and this is an uh, unamended agenda. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was looking at the one in the book. No, that's not it. I don't think I have an amended agenda. I just have a... Oh. Oh, no. Well, that's personal. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I have the amended agenda here. May I have... Is there any questions about the amended agenda? I think the Dryden and Lansing Ithaca... F, 7F, maybe. I think 8.2 and 8.3 are new from one I looked at before. So um, we have an addition, which is the, the attached unpaid tax roll for the Lansing School District. And number three, approve the attached resolution new money market account through Tremont Canal Trust. So we can talk about them at time of action. Any Okay, may I have a, a motion, I guess, to adopt the amended agenda? So moved. And any more discussion about the agenda? Everybody have the latest copy and is on track? We all good? Good. Okay. Um, all in favor of adopting the amended agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. I guess we're all seven of us are here. Seven zero zero. And we have some community members too. Excellent. Okay. Uh, moving on to community input. Community, do we have any input for us tonight? A microphone, if you have the microphone. No? Okay. Uh, hearing none, we will move on to our communications report, starting with our superintendent's report. Uh, I'd just like to start by congratulating uh, Adele Ferris. She competed in the States and did very well this past weekend, so congratulations to Adele. And I don't know if you saw in uh, the newspaper, she also recently signed to St. Bonaventure and will be attending St. Bonaventure next year, so congratulations to Adele. We had one uh, conflict for our board meeting dates. Uh, we had on December 8th, there's also cookies and carols, and we are had talked about moving that to December 15th. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long, we're just gonna make that change on the website and everything, and we'll be moving forward for that. So that's moved from the 8th to the 15th. I have our, the goals that we had talked about, and it's just a copy for you to keep in review. Um, this is, uh, this is board goals. These are the uh, just the board, uh, the, not the district goals that we were the bigger goals that we'll be working on, but the um, your board goals for the year. Take a look at them. We'll do some wordsmithing if yeah. we need to, but I'm just going to get these up there as a go. working document, so it'll be continuously in draft into, and we'll uh, try to go through and accomplish some of the tasks on here. Okay, maybe at the next um, maybe the next board meeting we can. can have time Between to now review. and then get feedback and we'll put it on the agenda for the next board meeting to try to finalize these. But Great. I think we've made a couple adjustments already. Okay. The very last thing I'd just like to talk about is to remind everybody that we have a capital project vote uh, for the SMART project. And it's Security Mechanical Architectural Reconstruction Technology. The vote is on Tuesday, December 9th. And it is in this room, the teacher center in the district uh, office parking area. And um, it's from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
I have everything's on the website now. You can see uh, in multiple spots right in the main page. There's the capital project vote, how to apply for the absentee ballot, voter registration information, and also on the headlines and features, you can go to the smart capital project page as well. So I encourage people to go to the, that website to uh, get information. Um, Chris? Yes. Um, it's a suggestion just to consider um, to promote this on the PTSO newsletter, mm -hmm. um, just for consideration. Sure. Um, I know that now it's being um, sent out on Tuesdays, so the deadline is probably the Thursday, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. I'm sure Debbie, Debbie probably has the information, but we can send that out yeah. to them. I think we've already sent this to them for, for that purpose. Uh, we uh, have a, had a video made last week with some of our um, music, our musicians at the school to help promote uh, the uh, facilities uh, changes at the high school, uh, myself, and with information that Mary June had provided me. And it's almost complete. We'll get that sent out. And right after um, Thanksgiving break, I will be sending a school messenger email out to everybody. That will include the video, this information, and um, uh, with, with just information on the capital project. So an infomercial. An infomercial, yes. Our, it's our, real, our first one. And, um, Who did the, the, the video? Tetra Tech. Oh. Yeah, and they came in and, you know, the, they were highly impressed with our students and their ability to articulate why uh, we needed some of the things that we need in this capital project. So, uh, so they, did, they really did a great job. Great. So, so I thank you to the our students participating. Okay. Uh, next, the school business administrator's report. I have just a couple of things to bring you up to speed. You uh, in the um, consensus agenda, that's not a consent agenda, <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully you'll find consensus on. Um, one of the items is uh, the treasurer reports. There's several of them for you to uh, take a look at. And that's a new format. Um, so I did prepare a little cheat sheet for you. Um, just has a little look where you add and where you subtract. And I'll give this all to each of you. Um, and if you have any questions on it, I, I looked it over thinking, should I do a little lesson on this, a little primer? But it's, it's pretty obvious, I think, particularly when you look at where these things are. Um, if you have any issues with this particular format, let me know. It's much simpler than what you've seen in the past. It doesn't have nearly as much detail. Uh, there are more people signing off on it. Currently, it's the treasurer that signs off on it. The manager of the central business office at TST signs off on it. And Karen Radiski is checking it against the numbers in WinCap as an extra precaution of the district signing off on it. She's not physically signing off on it. She'll check the numbers at a different time, but always prior to your looking at it, she'll make sure that the numbers all match. Um, that last piece was on the recommendation of our internal auditor, Ron Finch, when we first sent the treasurer duties up to the CBO. Um, and he'll be here probably next month, probably you know, the week after Thanksgiving. And uh, I will review with him again, does he want to make sure that someone from the district is viewing this? And does he want to have them sign off on it? Or does he think that they should sign off on it? Or is it sufficient for her to give me the approval that then we present it to you? So um, I'll give you these little pieces of paper before you go. So if, if you do take a look at that, you'll just see uh, what these <coughs> things mean. Um, the, the, the sad thing was that as I was looking at it today and comparing it and over the weekend, actually, and comparing it against reports that you received last year, I think I had compared it against the report from last February. And, you know, I noticed like we earned interest on one of the accounts in the tune in the past year of about 17 cents. Yeah, it was kind of sad for me to look at it at that level of detail, which is probably why I stopped doing the primer. Uh, the other thing to mention to you is the resolution. I was late getting the resolution to Debbie. That's part of the reason the agenda is amended. Uh, the resolution is to create another bank account. And, and I, I can hold off on this until the December meeting if you want, but I would like the treasurer to be able to move towards doing that as sooner rather than later. Um, and really, you already approved Shimon Canal as one of the acceptable banks uh, at the reorganization meeting. And uh, we have discovered that they are offering, offering a great interest rate, as well as a new program that actually gives us uh, greater financial security against risk, um, that, that all of the money up to a million dollars is guaranteed FDIC as opposed to $250,000 um, in the way that they manage the deposit. Uh, if we deposit that much. So uh, this, this is um, just to open the door for the treasurer to be able to move a deposit in there so we can start earning some real interest rates, um, hopefully, on it. And a new toaster. 
I'm sorry? And a new toaster for opening. And we haven't gotten a toaster yet, yeah. but if we do, I'm sure we'll try to figure out a nice place for it to, <laughs> to live. Uh, otherwise, I think that's about all I have. We did get the um, uh, state aid runs, uh, and I started constructing them against my projections this weekend. I didn't finish them last <coughs> night, so I will finish those over this next week, and at the next board meeting, I'll get you that information. Um, my, my initial look at it and look through a uh, quick peruse of it um, looked like we were going to be doing pretty well with the state aid, maybe a little better than we had anticipated. So that'll be a little bit of a revenue windfall for us if it works out that way. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mary June. Any questions for Mary June? Mary June, I think we talked uh, maybe in the audit committee about maybe going back to our current uh, holder of the accounts and just seeing if they wanted to, if they could counter to try and match, um, did you, do you yeah. any results and from Lisa, that? Lisa, the treasurer, and I talked about it. She had thought that she would make that, re reach out and make that connection. Um, and at this point, she hasn't heard anything. Okay. But before we make the move, I'll make sure that she's so solid with it. She's made the connection and either been told no or, or, or we have something else brewing. Good, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have Board of Education reports. If I may, maybe I'll, I'll lead off. It's good to be back. <coughs> Missing a couple of meetings, but it's uh, good to be home. Um, just a couple things. A few of us and a few teachers attended Ray Buckley's memorial yesterday. It was a very nice event with a number of current teachers, past teachers, past administrators, all back to celebrate the life of uh, Mr. Buckley. He certainly was a profound influence on our community, not only the schools, but the larger community. And he really walked the walk, you know, walked the talk. He, did, he really cared about kids and um, there were a number of nice uh, uh, reflections made talking about the impact he had made on people in the community. It was really, really a nice celebration. So he'll be, he'll be missed, but he, he was a great guy. Um, we went to tech committee a couple weeks ago, That's a week right. ago, I guess. And um, <coughs> they had just finished, um, I'm not sure I had the right words, Re, re networking, putting in the, the network new upgrade. Network upgrade, and which enables all the, all the hot spots around around the school, and I guess in every classroom now we have a hot spot, which um, allows delivery of uh, of the internet at faster speeds that that allow uh, students to access the internet better and more, more material. So they had a lot of pictures before and after. We should probably show sometime. They had, you know, pictures of the rat's nest that was the network and now the <laughs> new. So they were very proud of it. They did a nice job. Came in over the weekend and, and got it taken care of. So I think it was a it was a good project. Definitely thank you to them. So yeah, they, they did a nice day. job. Yeah, it's hard to do. Um, CDC representative was here and we started a discussion about next year's uh, projects and what they want to buy and they're hoping to get the request in sooner so they can get them processed through the state sooner so this material is here before school starts. I guess last year it was coming in, trickling in as classes were starting which causes some disruption. And uh, there's a couple more points. I noticed there's an advocacy event on the 11th of December in Marcellus. I didn't know if we were thinking to attend, obviously, guys, or what, what the plan is, um, it sounded like a pretty good event, talking about the best way to advocate for schools. Um, maybe a little closer we can figure out who, who's appropriate to go. It's, it's on the 11th from 6.30 to 8.30. So maybe we can, it was in uh, the yeah, recent, Thursday the Thursday night in Marcellus. And finally, um, I guess I haven't been back since the school board association. I think maybe at an upcoming meeting, if, if people attended had some, some information they want to share, maybe put some bolts together. So we don't <coughs> take a lot of meeting time, but we can convey some information. But I do have some pro handouts, some propaganda. This is uh, one of the sessions Ooh. I attained, I attended was on uh, award winners, schools that had done some noteworthy things. So they were passing these out. So it's interesting to see the type of things that other schools are doing for kids, and I also have the program if anybody would like to look at it. Um, all the presentations, I believe, are online, so if you weren't able to go, you can see, see the material. But uh, it was a good event. 
it was a little bit crowded. There were a lot of people there, and some of the some of the rooms, you know, you had to get there early to get bumped out. But overall, it was good. Okay, enough talking. That's all I have. Anybody else? Uh, we did have our communications meeting. It would take me probably 40 minutes to go through it. Is that, yeah, is that to right? communicate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> you want me to just go over go for just it. the all right. So the main the main points that we discussed were uh, um, initially it was to get folks back together from last year. Some of the parents and the other folks that were on the committee, the advocacy team. Um, <clears throat> so we wanted to review. Chris went over and reviewed um, some of our our wins from last year from our advocacy efforts. Uh, we talked a little bit about the, our purpose and you know where we want to go. Uh, we discussed focusing a little bit more regionally um, while not losing our voice um, and advocating for, for our district, but also for all the districts. Um, I, pr I probably should mention that uh, Dr. Madison attended from, uh, he, he's from TSD Bosey's, right? Um, and he had some, some, some good advice to give us. Um, talked a little bit about the state advocacy uh, updates and what's going on there, uh, what we hope to accomplish uh, moving forward, um, and a little bit about timelines, and I think that was pretty much it. Anything else you want to add? There's a lot more detail, but okay. that, that was the no, that was the good, highlights. Good highlights. Yeah, good highlights. Good. Any other reports from the policy committee meet? I know you were meeting last Friday or something. We reported. We reported. Okay, we I missed going. that. No. no. <laughs> okay. Did the CDC meeting and working with CDC to talk about um, where we're at as a district, what we're looking for, and we're really finding that we have a great deal of hardware and um, really uh, focused on having a plan to maintain that, to sustain that uh, without having uh, significant budget increases anywhere. We've been looking at or using our leases to do that. Um, but opening up the conversation to making sure that we're using that hardware to the best of our ability and that might be an area where CDC is willing to look at assisting us um, in training and professional mm -hmm. development areas. And then uh, also just to um, say thank you again to CDC because that project, that network upgrade was largely due to the infrastructure that they allowed us to, that they uh, had given us funds for, which was uh, branched out from what they usually provide uh, some of their, their funds for and uh, has made a direct impact on um, the use of technology for all students instead of a particular area. So thank you to them. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the highlight of tonight, the featured speaker <laughs> with a lap presentation. Yep. <coughs> Says something, you might want to postpone your update. Uh, we could, oh, that. You're going to be using the. Nope. No. No, 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 please. This on? Okay, perfect. I thought there was a green light. But anyway, um, first I want to um, thank you for the time and, and reviewing this plan. Um, going back to my previous presentation around the local assistance plan, and they call it LAP. Uh, they call it a LAP plan. It was kind of redundant because the P stands for the plan. But um, then I could give you a quick overview of how we got to the document uh, that we're asking you to approve uh, to post on our website and be kind of our guiding force moving forward, one of our guiding forces moving forward, uh, is we put together a lead team uh, made up of four people. Myself, um, Kathy Rourke, uh, Wendy Kermines, uh, and Lauren Fessler. Um, and what we did is we, we looked at the six tenants and we broke it down and we took responsibility for the review uh, based on what our job is within the district. Um, so I took mainly tenant two, which talks about building leadership, and I looked at you know, everything in our building regarding tenant two. Uh, Kathy took a look at tenant six, was uh, student social emotional support, um, and everywhere in between, Wendy took some of the, the curriculum and instruction components, Lauren took some of the curriculum components. Um, so we tried to break up the bulk of the work, and we, uh, we met on four or five different occasions, uh, but in, in between each meeting, we were out in the building, you know, talking to staff, looking at district documents, looking at building documents, kind of 
digging, kind of peeling the onion a little bit and finding out, you know, what, what's really going on in our, in our, in, in our building. Uh, and this plan really is, it's, it's an interesting process because if you rate yourself in the highly effective range, you don't have to do anything. Um, and having, having gone through a very similar process in the two last districts I worked in, um, the fact that we even considered um, that we're highly effective in certain areas was a different language for me to speak. Um, so if you look through that document, you're going to see a lot of areas uh, where we all felt very confident rating our, the, the school and the staff and the students as in the highly effective area. Uh, Lansing Middle School is a good school. There's a lot of great things going on. So our task was with this, and our goal is to minimize an issue that's been brought forth by the State Education Department that the gap between the performance of our all-student group and our students with disability group is too big. We have to close that achievement gap on our state assessments. Um, so we broke, uh, try to summarize it within the next minute and a half, um, we kind of come up with five priority areas uh, that we feel if we do these five things well, uh, we feel that we can begin closing that gap this year. Uh, the first area is to continue implementing our response to intervention plan that was began a couple years ago but really took off in the middle school last year uh, with the replication grant uh, with Marcus Whitman. Um, their, their reps have been down to our school twice this year, following me around, shadowing some of our staff, going to team meetings with us, and looking at our response to intervention structures uh, that we're trying to put, put in place. Um, and Al DeGroote, one of the, he's the lead grant uh, owner, I suppose, uh, he is thoroughly impressed with how far our grade level teams and our support teams have come in just the past year. Um, <clears throat> so we're, we're planning on visiting Marcus Whitman after in January, taking a team of teachers up there uh, and, and see how they work their response to intervention process and what it looks like, sounds like, feels like, and what those, how they run their meetings. Um, and again, the whole idea of response to intervention is not only to support our general education students, but also support our students with disabilities. Um, and also to identify areas where we, a kid struggles in school, it may not be a learning disability. It may be an instructional problem. And that's what response to intervention helps to identify that it is indeed an instructional problem, so we have to adjust our instruction. The kid does not have a learning disability. Uh, so we feel that, that the work we're doing right now uh, it's an immediate response and it's a needed response and it fits very well into what we see happening, closing that gap between our students with disabilities and our student group. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next uh, point is we're going to be creating a new master schedule at the middle school uh, beginning of this year. Uh, the schedule will take effect next school year, but it will take the rest of the year to plan it out. Um, even if we look at, right now we have 10 38 minute periods uh, with a 36 minute period in there and a 33 minute period in there as well. So if you take 30, 38 minutes times 180 days, that's our school year generally, you get 6,840 minutes of instructional time um, throughout the course of the year for one class. If you simply add four more minutes to each class, you're allowing not only more instructional time, 720 minutes more, but that equates to 17 extra classes per year per class. Which I, don't, I, can't, I have yet to find a teacher that says, I don't want to have 17 more minutes. And, or 17 more classes per year. We're not extending the calendar. We're simply, our goal is to make the period longer. Uh, more time on task, more time uh, to really dig deep and to help um, support all students' learning needs, even if it's four additional minutes per period per day. Um, the, the, the third point, uh, we now have, uh, TSD BOCES has now hired a new uh, special education uh, specialist. Um, I forget, uh, forget the name, but we have been corresponding via email and her role is to work with districts who have been designated as lab schools to help us review our co-teaching models, our consultant teacher models, our resource room models, um, and really sit in those rooms and observe what's happening. So we, we're, we're going to get a lot of support from BOCES uh, in those particular areas. Is our co-teaching model the most effective model? It, should we move to a more a consultant teacher model? Uh, should we change how our resource room is structured uh, to support specifically our students with disabilities? Uh, the fourth area, and, and like I said, there's a lot of great things going on. So we, we, we looked at this improvement effort as, what do we already have in place? Why, why are we gonna add anything else to the improvement cycle? 
Uh, so we're going to continue to implement our instructional priorities plan uh, that began this year, focusing on primarily student engagement um, at the beginning of the school year, but also looking at and helping our teachers communicate clear learning targets, uh, providing multiple opportunities for, for students to demonstrate their learning, um, employing effective questioning strategies, and incorporating text-based learning strategies. Those priority areas were identified by the district staff last year in a survey that these are the five most important areas that we as teachers feel will make us a better school if we spend time concentrating on these and being cognizant of how we're doing these things. Uh, so we began the year looking at student engagement. What do we mean by engagement? What does it look like, sound like, feel like? Uh, we had teachers in each other's classrooms observing each other. Uh, so th this process has already started. For the next couple months, we're going to focus on learning targets. How are our teachers communicating those to our students? Do our students know when, they, when I walk into a classroom and sit down next to a student observing a teacher, I should be able to ask that student, what are you learning today? You should be able to answer that question. If they can, the teacher's communicating clearly about what the learning targets are. Um, and, and, and essentially, those five things tied together, it's good instruction. It's what good teachers do all the time. Uh, and lastly, one of our priority areas, focusing more on the student social emotional uh, support, is looking at our Choices Planning Room program, our CPR program. Uh, it's one thing I'm interested in, in looking at uh, deep, deep, deeply because it, it's unique in that in a lot of districts, discipline and consequences, it's something that's done to students without any say from the student. You did this, you get this. This program allows student input into the owning the behavior piece and, and making amends and restorative justice, and, and they're part of making their own plan. I think that's great. Um, my question is, is it working? Or are we seeing the same students for the same problems over and over and over again? And if we are, who are they? What's happening? What's the presenting issue? Uh, so again, those are the five areas that the LAP plan focused, it's a 25 page document wrapped up into five small statements. Uh, but again, I can't reiterate enough that, uh, and I tried to sum it up as quick as I could. We're I'm fortunate to work at such a great school with great things happening all, all, all already. We have a one sentence mission statement. That's, that, that is amazing. We have district goals. We have an instructional priorities plan. A lot of good things happening. Our goal with the lab plan is not to introduce more, more work, but tie in and focus more in on students with disabilities, but do it through the mechanism of our improvement efforts we have already. Does anybody have any questions? I'm curious where you're going to find all these, all these minutes to four minutes per class and. Well, it, we're, we're, like I said, now we have a we have a ten minute or a ten period day. What if we went to a nine period okay. day? Okay. Or an eight period day. Can we restructure some things? Look at that. So this this advisory team I'm going to be creating. We are going to be looking okay. at that. Yeah, I I am curious about the document and uh, when you rate when you have a um, statement of, of practice and you rate it as highly effective. Why don't you have to provide evidence that that's what you're doing? Those are the parameters that state that says if you rate yourself highly effective, you can move on to the next area. Uh, we didn't make the process or don't want we are also I mean, there's a lot of um, questions that are out there about the process the integrity of it the value in this so it's one of was one of our um, goals to stay as focused to what we know is already the most appropriate thing for us to be doing to use this there are schools that were identified and needed this plan last year that just said we're not doing it because of it, but uh, not that that's the accurate response because it is a, a, something that we're supposed to be doing, mandated to be doing by the state. So we're trying to use it to the best of our ability to, to make change. So this, this section that says guidance and then it talks, the diagnostic self-review document provides, that's from the state? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's got a really bad error <laughs> on the first page of grammatical spelling error, which is kind of interesting that it's mm -hmm. telling you how yeah, you should, you should take a state test sometime <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> find all the errors in, in them. <laughs> um, just curious about the CPR room. So if this plan is for the, the gap that the state says we have, which we may or may not, um, and you're looking at CPR, I'm just curious if you've looked at the portion of students that, who go there who are. That's what, I, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want I to see, see the data. I want to see the students with disabilities. I want to see the all-student group or any subgroup that we have. I want to see 
what proportion of those kids being sent to CPR are who they are, and what category, unfortunately, what category we can put them in, and see if we do have a preponderance of certain types of students, categories of students, being sent to the choice of And you know, the gap is it not, isn't necessarily they didn't achieve standard, it's that they didn't achieve at the same rate, right. at, you know, just to clarify with, with you too, so. Um. And that could be an artifact of the instrument, which makes this entirely frustrating. It, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, as we said, as a lead team, you know, we were frustrated kind of going through some of the language of the rubric. And it is a decent document because those tenants are important areas that, that good schools focus on a lot of, a lot of their time and energy on. Um, but that was the most frustrating piece was we're a good school. Our high school is a reward school. So that means the middle school is doing something right along, along the way. You know, so we gotta, we're trying to spin this to be positive. Let's incorporate into what we're already doing and not make it something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, when we've been doing, a l really focused on uh, the peer observation piece and having teachers observe each other, but it's not to observe, really to say, this is what you did well. It's really to say, talk about the students. How are the, how are the students acting in the class? How, were, how did they answer the questions? What, you know, and to really be talking about that level so it's not like a, Evaluation of each other. It's really about the about looking at the student engagement and uh, interest and questionings and how many were involved. So that that's been uh, really great. The teachers have enjoyed it. At first, it was like oh another yeah. thing, and now they're like when are we going to do our no our next one? And I think everybody in your building has already done one uh, and close at the high school as well. So it's really been a good process. Yeah, it's kind of opening those doors between each other's classrooms. Nice. It's really great that you can do it in such a non-threatening way. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? If not, thank you for the Thanks. thank you for the presentation and for uh, I commend you for taking the positive attitude towards oh, yeah. this uh, document, which could be viewed as quite cumbersome. Okay. I d um, just so you know, this this page I do have completed for you, the oh, very front page, I'll add that to it. And it is on current documents for tonight's agenda as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, moving on to the consent agenda. I did not hear of anyone who wanted anything pulled from the consent agenda. So not seeing that we have anything to pull. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. All in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The consent agenda is passed, 7-0-0. Okay, moving on to action items. We have three action items for tonight. First one is to approve the attached request between Ithaca and Lansing Girls Ice Hockey merger for the 2014-2015 school year. May I have a motion? So moved. A second. Any discussion? I know this is something we've done in the past. We don't have a lot of, we don't have a hockey team. We have some young ladies who like to play hockey and they joined the Ithaca team in the past. So, so why, why aren't we providing transportation for the, um, the girls that might want to participate? Is it a timing or logistics or it's just I'm not sure. We've never had for. It, it this is a club team as well. Is this right? I don't know. I know we never have in the past. Yeah. Um, you know. I mean, I don't know. If if someone needed transportation, could be. Yeah. I know. The time. Is it yeah. timing? Just a question. Okay. <laughs> I think when we brought other students into our school for sports, it was up to the parent to get yeah. the child here from other districts. So when I saw that, I just assumed that was the agreement. But I think it brings up a good, you know, good question to, um, to consider at some point. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 7-0-0. Action item two, approve the attached unpaid tax roll for Lansing School District. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Discussion? Why do we approve this? Yeah, yeah what yeah. exactly <laughs> are you? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's one of those, um, those formalities that the state requires. 
is your approval of this. It is all given to this, the county, and the county does collect these taxes, and we are reimbursed by the county for the, this tax at dollar amount in full. So we're in no danger of not collecting these taxes unless any of them are in uh, uh, a challenge in court or something like that. But are you saying that the county pays us for these? The county, the county collects them. And then they'll collect it. They'll collect it with an additional fee, um, fee on top of it. But with um, no guarantee of, of potentially getting it. We get this money. So it's kind of just like an FYI for us? I mean, yeah. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes 700. Okay, action item three. Approve the attached resolution, new money market account through Shimong Canal Trust Company. I have a motion, please. So, second. second. Discussion. This is what Mary June mentioned earlier tonight, and I think maybe in some past meetings. Um, so we will just, if it makes sense, we'll proceed. 2%, that's a lot. 2%? Mm -hmm. And a toaster, right? Yeah. <laughs> <And> a toaster. <laughs> Considering interest rates yeah. in general, I, I'd be happy to get 2%, you know. So maybe we should all move our money to, <laughs> move our millions to, uh, yeah. you know, first. Oh, they got to be a million. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes 7 0 0. Okay, we are four minutes ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. But we can lengthen our executive at that. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a motion to close tonight's event. So moved. No, I second. Discussion? Okay. Well, adjourn to an executive. Oh, yeah, we are adjourning to executive session. This is a little different. We haven't done this in a while. Um, no, we will c conduct no business after returning from executive session, right? Right. Oh, for the purpose of yep. discussing collective bargaining contract negotiations. Thank you very much. So moved. Second. All in favor? All in favor. <laughs> aye. <laughs> Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. You're going to use that whole four <laughs> minutes, aren't you? <laughs> Three minutes early. I apologize for that. <laughs>